I think you'll agree that it's not difficult to figure out whether a stock market is performing well or not. Even people with very limited knowledge in investing can tell you whether stocks are up or down and how they fared in the past few months. All you have to do is visit a financial website or open the Financial Times and check out the movements of an index like the FTSE or the S&P 500. It's straightforward. But it hasn't always been that way. In the last video in this series, we took a look at how Wall Street began as a financial hotspot. And that video left off at the point where trading the markets was beginning to get organised with rules of engagement, membership and market bodies. But in this video, we'll be taking that history a step further to begin looking at how stock indexes were created, how they were formalised and adopted on a mass scale. In other words, we'll be looking at the history of the Dow Jones Industrial Index and how this changed the way people invested and traded forever. In November 1882, three journalists, Charles Dow, Edward Jones and Charles Bergstresser, formed Dow Jones and Company. Their first publication, which was released in 1883, was a two-page summary on the financial news. It was called The Customer's Afternoon Letter, and it would present stock price movements and unbiased analysis. The aim was to bring information that everybody was able to understand and to give the reader a clear picture of whether the stock market was going up or down. This sort of information was even more important back then than it is now, since data about the stock market wasn't consistent and it wasn't necessarily trusted either. Companies would try to hide their true financial values, which would make it hard for the public to try and figure out the real state of the market. So although we still have situations where rumours can take hold of a company's stock price these days, it was something that was a lot more commonplace back then and it was a key driver of stock price movements. Now, this led many people to preferring to invest in bonds since they were actually backed by something and didn't require the investor to really understand if the market was doing well or not. This early publication by Dow Jones & Co also featured a stock index, which was the first by Dow and is the oldest stock index to still remain in use, the Dow Jones Transportation Average. This is still considered to be the go-to gauge in the US transportation sector, but it had humble beginnings. It was created in July 1884 and appeared in the customer's afternoon letter, providing an average of 11 transportation companies which mainly included railroad companies. These days, this average contains 20 companies and it features companies like airlines, trucking companies, railroads and other transportation services. Publications like this were the first of their kind and they proved to be so popular that Dow Jones started a new publication called the Wall Street Journal, which began in 1889. This later became the most popular financial paper in the US, which meant more people were getting access to information about the financial markets and seeing it as less intimidating. In particular, the launch of a new average in the Wall Street Journal helped this even more. In 1896, Charles Dow created his first average of industrial stocks, following on from his transportation average. This index followed the 12 largest companies in each sector of the US stock market, which you can see the names of on screen now. This index, which he called the Dow Jones Industrial Average, still exists today under the same name. However, you may be more familiar with it being referred to as the Dow, the Dow Jones or the Dow Jones Index. It's the same average, although it does look very different now. So first of all, the only company still remaining in the index is General Electric and there are now 30 companies in the index instead of the original 12. And these companies aren't even heavily industrial in the modern index. The name just remains as the industrial average as a sort of historic throwback. So over the years, companies are added or removed to keep it as an accurate reflection of the wider economy, as well as changes being made, such as in 1928, to the method of calculation to help avoid distortions taking place. For example, when component companies go through situations like a stock split. So it's not just a simple average anymore of these companies. Now, thanks to the success of the Wall Street Journal, the Dow became the most followed average for anyone wanting to know about the direction of the overall market. It brought clarity to the public as well as information that was previously only available to insiders in the industry. 
This ultimately meant that the Dow helps the PR of the stock market and of course Wall Street. Traditional traders, including floor traders, were a bit reluctant to embrace this index as they had their own ways of measuring and gauging the stock market performance and they perceived this to be more of an intrusion than a help. However, this reluctance to embrace the Dow soon led to new developments in methods of trading. In particular, Charles Dow's principles for analysing market movements, known as the Dow Theory, set up a lot of the foundations for what would later become technical analysis. This included his observation that the Dow average was sort of like sticks in the beach sand, being used to determine wave after wave whether the tide was coming in or going out. If the average's peaks and troughs rose progressively higher, then a bull market was taking place, and if the peaks and troughs were progressively lower, it was seen as a bear market. If you know anything about trading and investing, you'll be fully aware that a lot of these principles are still very fundamental even today. So, now we've built our understanding a step further from our video on how Wall Street was created. We can now see how investing starts to become more accessible and understandable for the common person and how some techniques for understanding market movements began to take shape. Although these are obviously from just one thread of history. Later in this series, we'll take a closer look at the Dow theory and other developments in technical analysis from other threads of history. And of course, we'll be looking at key historic dates for the Dow Jones Index and US stocks in general, including the Great Depression, the financial crisis, and other events like the flash crash. But until then, if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, then please do give us a thumbs up. And we would absolutely love it if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to leave a comment, letting us know which parts you found most interesting and whether you're enjoying this series. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos on the financial markets, economics and trading. And if you want to know more about our approach for trading the financial markets, make sure you sign up for our free inner circle so you can get access to our exclusive four part video mini series teaching you all the foundations. The link is down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you very soon.